Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I want to do a bit of a news wrap up covering some things that went on this week. Normally we do the This Week in Gaming show on Saturday, but I wanted to do a quick news wrap up today because tomorrow EA Play is kicking off and we're going to see some Star Wars Battlefront 2 gameplay and possibly some other really cool stuff. DICE has got quite a lot lined up for this weekend and I plan to cover as much of that as possible tomorrow and possibly Sunday. So I kind of want to clear up the schedule for that. So today I want to cover some of the things that happened this week and also let's just start off by talking about what we're going to see tomorrow and when to tune in. Now if you want to watch the EA Play live stream it's going to start at 12 p.m. Pacific time. They're going to show off a whole bunch of games including Star Wars Battlefront 2, probably the thing I'm most excited for. Um, we might also get a glimpse of In the Name of the Tsar DLC, what that looks like. It's going to be the Russian DLC for Battlefield 1. I'm also quite excited about that. Uh, they alluded to there being some surprises or secrets in the lineup as well. These could be games from maybe Respawn or uh, Visceral Studios, the new Star Wars games that they're working on. Those are my hopes anyway. I would love to see even more Star Wars titles coming down the pipeline from EA. And of course, there's going to be a whole bunch of like EA sports games titles announced as well. Not really sure what time each individual game is being announced, but I imagine we'll have more information tomorrow. Now, as for the things that happened this week, Battlefield 1 CTE got a patch. They're testing out a few new things. There's mostly bug fixes in this patch. One major push or major aspect of the CT update is that they're focusing on operations and basically seeding servers better. There are some issues with it. They sort of explain it in the patch notes and how they're trying to remedy it so that people don't end up in empty servers. The sooner they can get this nailed down, the better for the health of operations. Still no word on whether or not we're going to see a fix to the spawning on dead players issue that's been prevalent in Battlefield 1 since launch uh it's been alluded to that this is a very core element to the game and that fixing it might actually require a huge workaround so um, it's possible we may in fact never see a fix to this problem in battlefield one still fingers crossed maybe one day dice will take a stab at it when it comes to player unknowns battlegrounds they're in the process of doing weekly patches and then one large monthly patch each month uh, they implemented their recent weekly patch, which has got some small server performance improvements and a few bug fixes here and there. Personally, I haven't seen any major performance improvements since the patch and players for the most part are reporting it feels relatively the same. Everybody is really waiting for the big server performance or network performance improvement patch that's supposed to come at the end of the month. And hopefully that will fix a lot of the lagging issues in this game as it is still incredibly prevalent. Nonetheless, the player base for PUBG has been growing incredibly fast. One of the top games on Steam and certainly one of the most top viewed games on Twitch. And speaking of Twitch and PUBG, they just announced an exclusive skin pack for PUBG if you... Basically connect your PUBG account to your Amazon Twitch Prime account and that will basically allow you to get a few cosmetic items in game that you wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. Unfortunately, these cosmetic items, in my opinion, look pretty awful and I hope this isn't a taste of what's to come uh, for future cosmetic items in PUBG. Uh, my hope is that most of the team is working on bug fixes and refinement and optimization instead of cosmetic items right now, but uh, I think they could do a little bit better down the road. When it comes to Rainbow Six Siege, Ubisoft is preparing to launch an absolutely massive patch that's going to fix many things the player base has wanted to see fixed pretty much since the game has launched. This patch is dropping on the 11th for PC and on the 17th for console. Without question, one of the biggest features of this patch is the new one-step matchmaking and interactive matchmaking upgrade. This is not only going to reduce the queue time for matchmaking, but it's going to introduce new features for matchmaking and allow you to customize your operator and cosmetic items while you're waiting to find a game or for the match to begin. This is a huge update to the UI and just general process of finding a game in Rainbow Six Siege, which I think is going to make the game far more playable. I mean, I honestly can't tell you how many times I've stopped playing Rainbow Six Siege because of the bugs or the lagginess of the matchmaking process or having issues of getting into squads with teammates and having certain people need to restart and relaunch you play and all that stuff. If this patch improves this process, 
less significantly, that's going to make the game far more playable in my eyes. The Operator Glass is getting a little bit of a weapon nerf to try and make him more playable or more balanced in competitive play. A few other Operators are seeing some tweaks and balanced here, and some spawn killing opportunities on certain maps has been reduced. So certain windows might be boarded up that you're not used to being boarded up. Overall, the community seems to be pretty excited about this patch, and I have to admit, I'm kind of excited to see how streamlined matchmaking is. If Rainbow Six Siege becomes a very easy game to get into and just start playing, that could really improve the experience for everyone. Epic Games has released a trailer for their new third-person shooter called Fortnite. This game is a survival zombie shooter with a little bit of Minecraft and base building mixed in there. And when I say a little bit, I mean probably a huge emphasis on base building. The trailer shows off an absolutely huge variety of objects and bases that you can build in different ways of defeating the zombies and enemies that you run into. It's also got a class based system with different characters and apparently you can unlock, upgrade and gain new characters and all that kind of fun stuff. The game has an interesting Pixar-esque look to it um, and it is borrowing from a lot of popular game genres and sort of throwing them all in together. Whether or not that means this game is going to create its own cool new unique feeling or feel bland is really up to you guys and the game is going to become available in early access on July 25th. Rebellion, creators of Sniper Elite 3, have just announced a new co-op shooter called Strange Brigade. They released a trailer for this that actually does look pretty cool. It's got some weird supernatural elements to it and some sort of uh, historical Egyptian Tomb Raider style uh, environments going on here. I like the art of this trailer a lot. It looks like it actually could be a lot of fun. Then again, I don't really know much else about the game other than I like the trailer so far. Battleborn, the somewhat cartoony competitive style shooter that was designed to somewhat compete in the same market as Overwatch, has gone to free to play. Well, technically they're calling it free trial mode, but everybody knows it's really just free to play. People on the trial version of the game will only have access to six of the 30 characters, but you will maintain all of your unlock and progressions. Those six characters will rotate every week. So in theory, you'll actually get access to play all the different characters. You just might have different ones available on a week to week basis. This is pretty good news for anyone who was thinking about trying Battleborn and hasn't yet. I'd highly recommend testing it out now as it is essentially free and the game is pretty high quality from what I've heard. Anyway, that kind of wraps it up for today's quick little news episode. Again, tune in tomorrow for more coverage on Star Wars Battlefront 2 and anything coming out of EA Play. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.